This is Vader Reviews. We are honored that you would join us. Like many of you, my first exposure to anime was the Toonami Time Block on Cartoon Network. From the music to Tom the Robot, I remember it like it was yesterday. If you haven't seen it already, last weekend, I made a video on how to make your own manga. If you or someone you know is interested in manga art, a link is in the description. Even though I only caught the tail end of Toonami every day watching Batman Beyond, it turns out it was always my destiny to become an anime fan. As a youngling, my favorite game of all time was a sci-fi run-and-gun platformer, and what I did not realize was that from the colors, storyline, music, and giant robots, Gunstar Heroes was very anime. Years later, I became friends with Jessica, an avid cosplayer and anime aficionado. A link to her Facebook and Instagram is in the description. Always want to share her passion for anime with others, she suggested I watch Samurai 7, an anime adaptation of Akira Kurosawa's classic film, The Seven Samurai. By combining science fiction with feudal Japan, the unique setting of this anime was unlike anything I had ever seen before. So join me as we discuss my top five favorite anime. Number five. Coming in with a bullet is the humanoid typhoon Vash the Stampede from Trigon. There's just something special about the art style from 90s era anime that always captures my imagination. And Trigon is no exception. The series is a futuristic western set on a distant desert world with two suns, so it's right up my alley, despite all the sand. I've also seen the movie, and I own the manga itself, and interestingly, the series delves deeper into the characters in the storyline than the original manga, seamlessly blending drama, action, and comedy together with deeper philosophical meanings. Trigon tells a unique and interesting story about a gunfighter who for personal reasons has made a vow not to kill. It's kinda like Kenshin with guns, so what's not to like? Trigun has also been a massive influence on a manga project I am currently working on. I'll tell you more about it in the future, but moving right along, number four is a colorful and beautifully drawn anime, Gargantia on the Verderous Planet. Right off the bat, my only real complaint with this series is that it is very short. It's only 12 episodes long, but still well worth the watch. The world they set up in this series is very interesting, and I would have liked to spend more time in it. It honestly feels like it would make a great video game. In the series, the world has been flooded, and everyone survives in an interconnected armada of colony ships. When Ensign Leto, a child soldier, who has been fighting an intergalactic war against a squid-like race known as the Hideyals, is stranded on this strange new world. He must connect with the locals and rediscover his humanity. With memorable characters, breathtaking artwork, and great character development, I can't recommend this series highly enough. And honestly, it kinda makes me wish I knew how to swim. Number 3. Yet another example of why gloves, boots, and a cape are the best fashion choice. One Punch Man. One of my favorite anime I've ever seen is completely insane and over the top in the best possible way. It's like an image comic from the 90s on steroids. It is extreme and ridiculous, but that is what I love so much about it. The over the top superhero combat can make Dragon Ball Z look tame with the sheer levels of devastation once they have put an end to their destructive combat. And while Western writers struggle to deal with Superman and his power level, the writers of One Punch Man deliver an interesting and unique character study of an all-powerful hero's endless search for challenge and meaning in his life. All wrapped in a comedic, ultra-violent, heavy metal-fueled package that started its life as a webcomic in 2009. So never give up on your dreams, because you might create the next One Punch Man. Coming in at number two is another 90s era classic, Roroni Kenshin. Another recommendation from my good friend Jessica. This was the second anime series I ever saw, 
so it holds a very special place in my heart. In terms of storytelling and artwork, no one series has influenced me as much as this one has. Whenever I draw anime or manga characters, I always tend to gravitate towards the 90s era anime styles. So to say I'm a fan of the series would be a drastic understatement indeed. I own four volumes of the manga. I've watched the entire series multiple times, and I have thoroughly enjoyed all three of the live-action adaptation films. Fun fact, the character Udo Janae served as the inspiration for the look of our Jedi Master Vong Zong in our upcoming fan film, Star Wars Fallen Jedi. I always enjoy revisiting the Roroni Tension series, particularly if I am feeling stressed or worn out, because it brings back happy memories from a time when I was just discovering the exciting new world of storytelling that anime had to offer. The series is very nostalgic for me for many reasons, and it's kind of like the comfort food of anime for me. I can turn it on in the background while I'm drawing manga pages, and it always serves as a great inspiration. Tenshin is a former government assassin who has taken a vow never to kill again. He's essentially Japanese Jason Bourne with a sword. What's not to like? Before we go any further, I would like to take a moment to express my gratitude and recognize my brave heroes of the Empire who have supported this channel through their generosity. Captain Matthew Nicholson, Snowtrooper Captain Noah Dingley, and I'm just happy to be a Stormtrooper, Adam Jordan. The Empire truly thanks you for your service. We couldn't do this without you, my friends. If you would like to be a part of what we're doing here, donate to our PayPal today so we can continue to bring you weekly videos. A link is in the description. Like all top 5 videos on YouTube, we're going to cheat a little bit and squeeze a couple more shows in here with a list of honorable mentions. Kicking off this portion of my list is the first season of Sword Art Online. The premise of the series was interesting enough, being trapped in a video game where if you die in the game, you die in real life. The art style and world building were impeccable. Having a title song performed by Lisa doesn't hurt matters either, as the music can be a large factor in how much I enjoy an anime. With the rich world they created for this series, I'm surprised no one's made a VR SAO game yet. Another trapped in a video game anime I enjoyed was Log Horizon. But unlike Sword Art Online's if you die in the game, you die for real mechanic. In Log Horizon, no one can die. Everyone just respawns. And while they too are trapped in this game, they must learn to accept their fate and begin to build a new society within the confines of this fantasy world. My only complaint is that the series is incomplete, though rumors persist we may get a third season one day. Finally, the series that nearly made my top 5 list, Old Noah Zero. First off, the art style and music in this series is absolutely incredible. And while there is a myriad of mech suit anime out there to choose from, what I particularly like about this series was the ingenious way our hero Inaho would calculate the proper way to defeat a seemingly invincible opponent. Full of political intrigue, intense and well animated battle sequences and raw emotion, this series is definitely worth a watch. Finally, coming in at number one, is the story of how Izuku Midoriya became the world's greatest hero, My Hero Academia. Unlike some series that can have lackluster filler arcs, I can honestly say I have enjoyed every season. The quality in the artwork, animation, and storytelling has been consistent. And while I don't usually get emotional watching films or television, when I saw the second My Hero Academia film in theaters, there was a moment during the finale that got me. This series is everything Western comics used to be. Colorful, fun, exciting, and heroic. Where ideals like responsibility, doing the right thing, and saving people are the main focus of the heroes. The unique powers and exciting battle sequences pay off with genuine emotion because I've grown so fond of all the characters throughout the series. It's like Sky High if it was cool, and what this series proves is that the audience connects with the true hero's journey, 
where our protagonist literally starts from nothing and has to fight and claw every step of the way to achieve their goal. But what makes this series so uplifting is that Midoriya's ultimate goal is selfless. He struggles not for fame or glory, but to protect others and make the world a better place. So for his artwork, captivating characters, unique and interesting power sets, beautiful animation, and thrilling soundtrack, My Hero Academia goes beyond. But that was my list. It's always difficult to pick between my favorite shows or movies, but I'm curious to know, what are your favorite anime series? I'm always on the lookout for a new show to watch, so uh, drop a few comments below and let me know what anime shows you're watching. This has been Vader Reviews. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications, and follow me on Twitter, at Vader Reviews. Join the Empire today. You do not yet realize your importance. Share these videos, and together we will rule the internet. And always remember, you don't know the power of the dark side.